What's going on, y'all? I want to preface this video is I want to thank everybody for, I, I never intended to test all this two-stroke oil. This all started with a rant way back last year. Uh, but as we've kind of come along and y'all have asked me for some more information and we've tested a bunch of oils over the years, I've gotten smarter. Um, and I'm just a dumb old redneck, you know, and at the end of the day, it's your piece of equipment. You run whatever oil you want in it at whatever ratio you want to. But I thought this was something interesting. Some of the motorcycle guys have chimed in and I like that this is, it's the same, but different. Um, if that makes any sense. Uh, I've mentioned in a few videos how expensive it is to buy the individual bottles, the, the convenience of pre-measured. You know, if you only make, you know, if you only use two gallons of mixed fuel a year, then, you know, it's no big deal. But I mean, if you're mixing fuel, especially this time of year, if you're running a leaf blower, you're burning up some gas, some mixed gas. And um, buying in quantity, you know, getting away from the one hit bottles and going to, you know, buying a, a right ratio cup, or you know something that would be considered accurate to measure your oil and then mix your gas together you know if you buy something in a quart much more economical let's just say as a broad statement anything in you know a one to two ounce or excuse me a one to two gallon pre-mix bottle is going to run you about if you do the math about 45 to 65 dollars per quart all right, so you can get kind of bougie here and that's what we're gonna do. Let me stop here and I'm gonna show you something. Man, I really wish I had one of those oil luges uh, like Project Farm does. But what I did notice a couple weeks ago, we were using some of the, um, you know, the, the nicer uh, glass measuring, uh, some of these oils, I can't remember which one, maybe it was like the Red Armor. Red Armor had a lot more cling in the glass beakers when I was trying to flush it out and then, you know, remeasure again a different oil. So some of these were a lot thinner. And I was like, you know, I guess that makes sense. You know, Red Armor's, you know, been well known to leave great oil film. It burns super clean. It's got a huge following. It's a great oil. But, um... The shop's about 60 degrees right now, and all of these are, you know, well within ambient temperature. So if I just lift this up and show you how fast or how not fast some of these oils go. I know this is low tech. All right, if you want high tech, you got to go see somebody else. But, you know, I want to see, so that's your Ultra HP and um, the XP Plus, so that's their newest formulation. It's got the FD rating, so does the Red Armor. And the Red Armor and the old school steel seem to be some of the thicker oils. And... All right, with that being said, not one individual thing is going to make a great oil. Just because it's thicker, you know, if it doesn't burn as clean, because it's got a higher flash point, but the flash point on it refers to you know what, before I get too high tech, if you really want to dig deep into some oil, there's a, uh, a website, it's uh, Dragonfly75. He has really taken a deep dive. There's a lot of technical information in there. It rates, and it, it mostly it's motorcycle oils. Um, but what I've been able to prove in very simple everyday run tests is that some of these oils burn better and leave better film in the crankcase to protect the important parts. I've always said that 50 to 1 is adequate for upper cylinder lubrication. So your piston and cylinders seem to do fine at 50 to 1. But down in the crankcase where your crankshaft and bearings are, you know, the, the better oils really do shine. And I think having a little bit more viscosity to protect those, you know, Red Armor does incredibly well. Actually, you know, when I tear stuff down with either Red, or Red Armor or Dominator, the oil is almost tacky after it's set for a day or two and I do the tear down. Um, and I think that has something to do with it. And we may see it in some of these oils that I'm going to test. So let's get on to the next round. Okay, so this isn't, again, exact, 
but I do notice that all these motorcycle oils seem to be a lot thicker. You know, when I first lifted this up, hardly anything moved. And there's a little bit more oil on here than the last test. And again, this is low tech. This is just showing you, like when you shake these bottles, it's syrupy. All of these oils, and especially uh, the Honda HB2, uh, it, this stuff's thick. Uh, the caster, just low tech, seems like a nice thick oil, kind of like the Red Armor. Um, the reason why I chose these motorcycle oils, uh, most of these are made for racing applications. So sustained high RPM running. And that's going to be more consistent with what we do with chainsaws. Um, we've got small high strung engines that are, you know, most of our modern saws are going to average about 9,000 RPM to 10,000 RPM in the cut while it's under load uh, with a free rev of 13,000 just as a ballpark range. Um, I'll be interested to see how these do. Um, none of these th four oils that I have here could I find any FD or excuse me, any Jasso rating on. And I don't know if that's the, you know, it allows them to make small adjustments over time as they see fit without having to get it recertified or just the expense of setting oil off to Jasso, having it tested and getting all the documentation. I, I have nothing for that. For argument's sake, let's just go ahead and assume that these would at least meet Jasso rating FC at bare minimum. These are highly regarded oils in the motorcycle community. You know, they they may burn cleaner, don't know. We'll find out because we're gonna do these one at a time. Um, so here's your price breakdown. You know, yes, these are expensive oils if you look at it, you know, anywhere from, you know, 20 to $33 per quart slash liter point splitting hairs but if we mix this at 40 to 1 your use on the motul is just two dollars the hp2 is 313 h1r is 316 so i mean that puts it in the same range as you know your manufacturer is old depending upon where you buy it you know you get this at the steel dealership these are i think two bucks and three bucks uh you know this would be three bucks at a dealership it's five something at Lowe's same thing with this you went to an echo dealer it's about three something so we're not spending any more money we're just looking to see if we can get better performance buying in bulk and using some bougie oil so with all that being said I'm ready to test something if you will leave tell you what, the first person in the comments to pick one of these four oils is what I will do I'll, after I get this uploaded, I'll wait a little bit. Whoever chimes in with which oil they want to see tested first, I'm going to go ahead and mix some up, run over the woodlot, do some testing, and then tomorrow morning we'll follow along and do a teardown visit, teardown <laughs> video on uh, one of these four oils that you pick. So with that being said, don't forget to subscribe. If you found this enjoying, enlightening, or entertaining, throw me a thumbs up. I sure do appreciate it. I'm looking forward to testing these oils.